Hello and welcome to a week 15 edition of Establish the Bets. My name is Adam Levitan, as always, joined by King of the NFL Markets, Matthew Davidow, to talk all things sides and totals for week 15. Hopefully you guys all know Matt. By now, Deck Prism, Huddle, B2B, taking on all comers. You want to bet? Matt will take your action if you're in the right state. And that's a great book. <laughs> uh, how's it going today, Matt? Pretty good. How are you, Adam? Good. All right. I, I want to start with last night's game. And actually, I thought last night's game was kind of a similar setup to that Cardinals-Patriots game. That was, I think, like a, a Monday night game mm -hmm. where there was a home dog. And in these island game home dogs, I, my you know smooth brain just expects the public, everybody at the bar to just always be on the road favorite. But in these two spots, I mm -hmm. felt like the go to a bar, ask a hundred people thing. A lot of people were saying the home dog. People were like, oh yeah, Arizona is better than the Patriots. Why, why are the Patriots favorite? Oh, oh, like last night, uh, uh, Seattle can with Brock Purdy, Se Seattle can beat San Francisco. Why, why are they a home dog? Now I asked you and you said you were seeing relatively even action in this spot. So, but I don't know. I'm always intrigued by when the public is on perceived sharp spots like home dog and Island game spots. So any thoughts on that at all? Any thoughts on the action you saw for Arizona, New England, or uh, uh, last night's game? I mean, from our perspective, both games were fairly lightly bet and fairly balanced. Uh, we made the game, both games, like, you know, right, right, right on the, you know, the side in total as well. So very, like, uninteresting from, 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 from my seat. Uh, at the same time, I do think that you're, you know, nailing it on. I actually, you know, used to think that some of the very best bets, my favorite bets were when, when, you know, I liked that small road favorite and there were, you know, people talking on ESPN about the, you know, about the dog and this, you know, the Niners definitely qualify, you know, that's, that's the type of team, right? The, the quarterback sucks, mm -hmm. you know, they're laying three on the road. It's oh, it's a tough place to play and you, you get all those narratives you know, with it as well. So. I definitely, exactly. uh, I definitely feel in hindsight that that makes some sense. Exactly. Okay. Saturday games this week. And so we haven't had kind of this off brand three game slate in a while. There are three Saturday games this week, Colts, Vikings, Ravens, Browns, Dolphins, Bills. I assume you're not going to see as much action as the Thanksgiving slate, but still these are Island games in themselves. It's a Saturday. I assume they'll be way, way, way more popular. Can we expect the public to shape, to shape these lines? more than usual or is it just a standard run of the mill and anything else people should know about these saturday games actually i actually don't think that these saturday slates in december really get you know that much more action people aren't used to watching the nfl on saturdays for one to you know it's just got something to do on saturday i mean it's the middle of saturday in december you know kids are off school it's you know, Thanksgiving, everyone's stuck at the house. There's nothing to do but the three NFL games. You also have, like, you know, there's six bowl games tomorrow. Every college basketball team is playing. If, you know, you're a sports fan, you might go to one of those games, for instance. I don't think that these are, you know, particularly big games. I I, I would guess especially the, uh, the the Bills, Dolphins, and the Snow could get some, you know, more handled in the Sunday games. But, like, the Sunday night game, for instance, will dwarf these games right. as far as the like. What do you think about the weather with – uh dolphins bills i know we've talked about weather before you know this forecast is even more all over the place because there is going to be a storm but they don't know when it's going to hit right and so it's like unpredictable if it's gonna be actually snowing during the game or not have you seen a bunch of total action as people try to predict the weather here or any thoughts on the weather here you mentioned you know the weather being unpredictable and it's i always get a kick out of the the you know weather. The weather's always unpredictable i've, I've often said as one one reason why it can be harder to beat totals is that the, the noise that is the weather that is just unpredictable that you know you're obviously playing in, into a hold and makes it tougher. And this has been fairly lightly lightly bet so far for you know you and usually these weather games, especially when it's supposed to snow, they kind of get hit hard. But this total's low. I mean, this total's obviously really low too. If uh, like if it were good weather, which it's obviously yeah. not. Also interesting that. Uh, um, uh, the weather's be cold, and the other team, you know, has been practicing in Florida. Well, uh, Florida, or they were just on the west, you know, LA. Right. I do think that there's there's something to that that climate change being a you know making for a larger home field advantage. 
what do you think the total would be here if this was clean weather, but it was still all the same uh, clean snow, but still all the other same weather It's kind of cold. It's in Buffalo. Any idea what the total would be for a Dolphins Bills game in Buffalo in December on normal weather? I mean, I want to say it's be 47 ish. I'm trying to look it up here. So you think I would have been ready for a question like that, but you know. yeah, no, I, I, I when it was, it, I think the total got lower than this thing was like 42, 43 for a little bit when people mm. were really freaking out about the weather. And I was like, man, this is really early in the week to be overreacting. So I didn't play it, but I, I thought if I had a baseline of what it should be, maybe I would have. I um, think it would have been like 46 and not 47. Okay. I think. Let's go to Jacksonville, Dallas. So this Dallas game last week, I swear, would have been like the most surprising result I can ever remember Hmm. in the NFL. Like they were, I mean, this Houston team is so, so, so bad. Dallas was playing so, so well. Dallas was at home. There was no, you know, uh, weird conditions. Nothing weird about the game. Houston just outplayed them for like the entire game. Has the market overreacted now? Because now we have Dallas as a four-point favorite. And on the other side, by the way, I know we have a question in chat. People want to know your take on Trevor Lawrence, given what kind of prospect Trevor Lawrence is and the way he's played over the last, I don't know, month and a half. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, Trevor Lawrence looks like a straight baller to me. So what do you think about this Dallas Jacksonville game? There's a lot going on here. Right. So, I mean, to, to, to start with the, start with the Houston game last week, the you know, Houston Dallas, I don't think Houston, I don't think Houston outplayed him. I think Dallas was, uh, was definitely the, the the better team, you know, better team there, you know, play by play by play wise. I'm 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 looking it up now. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure Dak I'm had some Dak had some of, really bad turnovers, but yeah, yeah, well, for sure, for sure. I'm not, you know, yeah. Um, you know what? <laughs> our, our our stats have this, you know, game fairly even, or like you said, Houston slightly better. I I didn't watch a lot of this game. I know Driscoll got a lot of a lot of play. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't one of the games I was uh, responsible for, for for supervising, so I didn't see a lot of it. But I, they don't run a lot of plays in these football games. You know, it's what each team gets about sixty plays. It's an oblong ball bouncing around. One guy misses a block. You know, another guy drops a pass. You know, some, some of the plays are obviously way more high leverage than others. I mean, you know, it's third and goal at the five. That's obviously hugely more important than you know second and one in midfield. And I think a lot of times. We as you know, humans as betters as you know, sports fans just put too too much stock, too much predictive you know predictiveness on whatever happened in these short number of plays, and that's why it's like, yeah, Dallas didn't play the best game last week, and for the most part, it's shrug you know, move on. Here's mm-hmm. Dallas with four and a half you know in Jacksonville, which is a fair line in in my opinion. Going to Trevor Lawrence, I was not, I didn't think Trevor Lawrence was a special prospect. You know, a fine prospect is, I mean, clearly deserved to go, you know, top 10, whatever. I didn't think he should have gone to Burby. I'd honestly draft the fields before him if people probably say that before. You know, all things being equal. Obviously, I would have tried to trade down, and, you know, gamed it or whatever. But I definitely thought fields was the better prospect. The way I look at the quarterbacks, in, what makes the NF, what gives you your team the best chance for the Super Bowl or to like win a lot of games for long? I mean, you, you really want to have the quarterback in his rookie contract. I mean, this is why the Niners did what they did with Trey Lance. And you want that huge upside. It just doesn't do a lot of good to end up with uh, uh, Matt. Uh, well, Matt Stafford's pretty good. I would do Jared Goff or, uh, you know, one of these quarterbacks have been around a long time that are good, but never really going to be great. Let's say Justin Herbert gets stuff thrown at me again, because I, I think he fits that category. He's never going to be great. He's a good quarterback. So when you have a guy like, Fields or, you know, back to Josh Allen or, you know, obviously Caleb Williams coming out next year. Those guys with that, you Pat Mahomes, those guys with that ceiling, yeah, they might not hit it, but when they hit it, you've, you've made it. And I don't think Trevor Lawrence has a ceiling like that. Yeah, he's played better the last few games. He was not good early in the season. He was not good last year. Certainly has, you know, all the tools, as they say, to be a solid NFL quarterback, but I don't, I don't, I don't think he's about to, you know, head to the Hall of Fame or anything. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree he was not playing well, but man, I don't think they have a great team around him and he's elevating guys like Zay Jones and Evan Ingram are having career years, I think because of Trevor Lawrence. Like these guys were massive busts as first round picks, as second round picks. They get with Trevor Lawrence now and those guys are actually playing well. So I I hear you. In terms of this game though, I I think there is some 
overreaction to how badly Dallas played last week and how well Jacksonville played in the second half against Tennessee. So I don't know. That's not yeah. a, a it's just a tricky game. I think you were right about Geno Smith. I Geno Smith, even last night, he had some bad plays last night. I yeah. thought played well last night. And, yeah, you know, that was probably, you know, and I, I, I ha- you've probably watched Lawrence closer than me. And you, you, you saying that you've seen him turn a corner recently make, makes me want to watch him closer. One thing I'll say about Evan Ingram, I mean, that was a first round draft. There's, I mean, he always had the talent and now right. he's just, you know, playing like it. I think the Jacksonville offensive line is average ish or better. And I think they have a great coach. Okay. Let's go to oh, the other side of the game. So Houston, I, I don't know how to handle this, man. Like Houston shows up and outplays Dallas in Dallas, just out of the stone cold blue. Do we just throw that out? Or, yeah. I mean, how much does that throw get baked in? Just throw it out. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like, I mean, we don't throw it out. It's just one game that goes in with the rest of them. The fact that it happened last week, I do think using Driscoll is a great idea. I mean, their quarterback play was so bad. I mean, Mills is terrible. They put, uh, you know, they played uh, Allen, Kyle, Kyle Allen, and he was. I mean, he's been better than Mills in the past. I don't know that he was in those couple games. Driscoll gives you a run threat. You know, he's for sure. I, I thought that was a good idea, and it obviously worked from last week. And I would, I would definitely expect that to, to continue for Driscoll to get a you know number of snaps. Yeah, I mean, 14-point home dog is massive. And to me, like, the market's just, like, shrugging it off. Like, oh, yeah, Houston played well last week. Let's see them do it again. And I actually agree with that sentiment. Like, I think that they're going to get their ass kicked, you know? But, I, I mean, I just – it's weird to see them play so well last week. I mean, just so – We bad. made the game a little higher. <laughs> made it higher, yeah. It, you know. Think... Do you think it's going to – it's it's like 14, 14 and a half now. You think you can close higher than that? I think so. I mean, I think it'll close higher. Okay. I feel like I, I'm on another planet with this Mike White, Zach Wilson stuff. Am I the only one that thinks Mike White is like significantly better than Zach Wilson? And not just better, but they have a better game plan with him. In other words, when Mike White's in there, they actually try to throw. They try to be somewhat aggressive. When Zach Wilson's in there, not only does he suck, but they're also hiding him massively. And they have these suboptimal game plans where they just run the ball on first and 10, et cetera. And I know like there's a lot of PROE and a lot of, a lot of, expectation stuff in there. Mike White has had been throwing in some negative scripts. Zach Wilson had some positive scripts, but still I was surprised this line didn't move Mm -hmm. more on the news. What did you think of the scratch today of Mike White and going to Zach Wilson for the line? Well, I I mean, a few things. One, I completely agree about Mike White. Now, I I also don't think that's a unique opinion. Like certainly other larger you know, betters are very much into Mike White over over uh, Zach Wilson. You know, we talked about Zach Wilson earlier in the year, just being a bad quarterback. And, and I think Mike White might be an average NFL quarterback, which is pretty good for a guy who could barely crack a starting lineup, you know, sure. versus or Zach Wilson this year. As the line moved today, it was so interesting because as the news as the news came out, I was uh, I was listening to our trading channel and somebody asked, okay, what's this worth? And our vice president of trading, who's fantastic, is like, I think about 3%. And I was like, you know, well, this is interesting because on one hand, I think a lot higher than that. On another hand, I don't expect the line to move much. Now, why did I not expect the line to move much? One, I think it was already included in the line, either by, even by accident or on purpose, that, I mean, Mike White was in the hospital Sunday yeah. night with broken ribs or whatever yeah. is wrong with him. It's not like he's healthy. It's not like he was going to be 100% anyway. Uh, and then we talked about this before. These midweek lines with low limits are just – there's just not – this isn't much of a market. I think the answer was if Mike White was playing, you know, the line was going to go to, you know, two and a half, maybe even Jets three. Mm-hmm. And it just hadn't moved yet because of smaller market and or uncertainty on White. So what you kind of caught was either – a bad early week line or a line, and I'm not really sure which that basically had a shot of white not playing or playing much worse already included in it. And that's why I didn't move much. I, I think it's if it, I think the Jets might even get played from here. Yeah. That's the Jets interesting. Are a good football team. And as much as as much as I love our Lions and our yeah. Lions are, are are playing well, it's one of the the Lions are one of these interesting teams that I've I've seen these teams for like 15 years. These teams I have rated better than market. And you know you are on this week, we're on next week, we're on the week after, and then they win a couple games. Yeah. And I am ready the same, and all of a sudden the market goes past my number. And I think that's kind of what's happened with the Lions. You know, we talked about, you know, you know we, we like the Vikings last week, 
And the Vikings actually outplayed the Lions on a play-by-play. You know, again, short sample. That's not to say the Vikings are better or the right side or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the Lions obviously scored more points. And here again, I think we have the same situation. where I think the Lions are now overrated in the market. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that for sure. And, yeah, I, I'm obviously rooting for the Lions every game here. But, yeah, this spot is, is tricky. With, with, mm-hmm. with Mike White in there, I definitely would have been scared. I feel better about restoring yeah, the role. That's chance of the division, huh? Yeah, well, that would be something. Okay. Guess it's pretty outside still. Last thing I have here is all this rest stuff with the Packers Rams Mm -hmm. game. I mean, I know you talk about rest a lot. I mean, Packers have had off forever. They've got to buy and now they don't play until Monday night. We're talking about like 15 clean days of rest for a home game for the Packers to get ready for this Rams team, which I, it sounds like uh, from last week sounded like you were a little bit higher on than me. I still think this is one of the worst teams in the league. I'm a little bit surprised this line actually isn't higher. Now I know the Rams have a lot of rest too, because they played Thursday and now they don't have to play until Monday either. So any thoughts on this game? We have Packers minus seven in a home game against the Rams. I'm surprised it's not higher too. And I think it'll go up. I think that uh, I, I'm not convinced that Baker, well, we talked about Wolf, Wolf for being hurt. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, true and part of it, I'm not convinced that Baker Mayfield is better than a healthy Wolford. And mm-hmm. I, another situation where, with the Rams rated the same as last, the Packers are better than the Raiders, right? So this this is a huge adjustment, and you know when you count in the Packer rest, et cetera, versus the, you know, as opposed to the Raider game, and I I don't really understand it. I guess yeah. the, the the Rams weren't very good in the game. I mean, they obviously came back at one, but they weren't good. Baker Mayfield was not good. I mean, made a couple of good plays, a couple of good passes at the end. They got lucky and. The Rams do not have a lot of players. I, I think it's closest higher, and I like Green Bay. Yep, agreed. All right. That is going to do it for the Week 15 betting show. You can follow Matthew Davidow at Davidow Matthew on the Twitter machine. Of course, hopefully you're following me already at Adam Levitan. If you need to sign up for books, try to find the best line. I'm going to go bet some stuff. Here, be sure you go to establishtherun.com slash offers to get paid for when you sign up for a book. Take advantage of the promos. For Matt, for producer Adam, I'm Adam. Good luck, everybody. Well, okay,